I was 14 years old when I first became conscious that something was horribly wrong in America after hearing of the death of civil rights leader Mega Evers. Assassinated outside of his home on June 12, 1963 in Jackson, Mississippi. He was killed for no other reason than having dark skin and defending his constitutional right to register his people to vote. His death gave birth in me an urge to want to do something to fight injustice. During the summer of that year, I also wanted to go to the March on Washington, where Dr. King made his famous speech, I Have a Dream. After pleading with my parents to let me go, they still said no. I went to one of the locations where the buses were leaving, and there I stood and watched the people get on the bus. I started to justify my parents and jump on the bus, but I didn't. But I did feel, however, that day my spirit got on the bus and went to Washington. Three weeks after the march on Washington, this urge in me to get more involved grew stronger. After hearing of the brutal killing of four little African-American girls when a bomb was thrown into their church while they were waiting for Sunday school to start. Two years later, March 1965, while watching the news, I witnessed another horrible act of violence which later became known as the Bloody Sunday, the day so rightly named after the Alabama State Police attacked a group of unarmed, non-violent African-American demonstrators for protesting for their right to vote. The police, using tear gas and with nightsticks, savagely beat them as the world watched on television. After that, I guess my soul said, Kenneth, that's enough. I'm going to disregard my parents' fears for my safety. Two months later, May 1st, 1965. I was 16 years old. I joined up with the Philadelphia NAACP Youth Council under the leadership of civil rights activist Cecil B. Moore to fight segregation and discrimination at Gerard College in Philadelphia, a school that sat in the middle of an African-American community that had an admission policy that admitted white male orphans only. That year, the teenager in me died, and the man in me became alive. I quit high school and became a full-time freedom fighter that many began to nickname me Freedom Smitty. The speeches that Dr. King gave and Cecil B. Moore gave challenged people to look at this seriously, that this is a serious issue, and we have to win but we're gonna to have to win with more support. My brothers and sisters of the city of Philadelphia, I must face the fact that it is a sad experience to have to stand in the city that has been known as the cradle of liberty that has in its midst and in its presence a kind of Berlin Wall to keep the colored children of God out. I never really embraced the idea that we were fighting for civil rights. That was something that sort of dampened what we really wanted. We were denied human rights. I mean, the, the access to a restroom, that's a human right education. So when people respond and try to embrace the humanity of all of us, that's what makes us one. Dr. King said, I was denied my rights just based on my skin color, but I can't even Think of trying to stop somebody. And we would lock arms or we would say, We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. Asper Jordan was at a loss for words that day, but Kenneth Salam was not. Known as Freedom Smitty, he was a member of the Freedom Singers. He was tasked with leading the demonstrators in Philadelphia in song before Dr. King took the stage. You remember what you were singing that day? We won't let nobody turn us around, Lord, turn us around, Lord, turn 
Over the course of fighting for injustice, Salam and Asper Jordan would be ridiculed and even arrested. But that didn't stop Kenneth. He quit school and began to travel to other American cities, joining Dr. King even more in the movement. I've never seen Dr. King show fear. He would inspire others to, to hold their grounds, hold their position, and we're going to stand here until this issue is addressed. And then the tragic moment of April 4th, 1968. The word comes now that Dr. King has been assassinated. Atlanta at the funeral, uh, there's so many people, just, the town it was just swelling. But despite the enormous crowds, the passionate team from Philadelphia was once again by Dr. King's side. This now famous picture is of King's funeral procession, and right there is Freedom Smitty. I was in front of the procession with Coretta Scott King, his brother, his mother, and everybody, and I started singing the Freedom song. Turn us around, Red, turn us around. Gratitude.